Hello, I'm Rob and welcome to another tutorial on how to create their mods. In this tutorial, we're going to be placing sprites and just uh, I'm going to show you the basics of sprite properties, just a few basic things. So what you want to do is open the demod we created earlier, which is Orbs of the Realm, or OOTR in this list. And if you go into here, you should still have your tiles from the previous tutorial on how to place tiles. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to be placing sprites, so we need to go into sprite mode. So to make sure you're in sprite mode, press R, and you should just have a cursor. Not like in tile mode where we had a square, but press R to go into sprite mode, you'll just have your cursor. Now press E, and that'll bring up the page of sprites. And what you'll notice is, uh, depending on your resolution, I have to set my resolution lower for recording, so it wouldn't lag. But, uh, you might not be able to see all the sprites, it'll end down here. So to go to the next page, press page down. And it'll go down a page. And if you still can't see them all, then you've obviously got a very low resolution, but you just keep pressing page down, and it'll go to the next page. And to go to the previous page, you press page up. Okay, now, what you'll notice is, uh, all of these sprites, uh, they're all... They're all sequences. If you run your mouse over them, you'll see in the bottom left that the sequence number changes. Like that. And it goes in numerical order. So if you go across like this, in rows, you'll see that it changes in order. Now, if we was, we'll say to click on sequence 95, you'll notice now that we're in sequence 95 that the frame number will change when we go across here. Each sequence is made up of a set of frames, which is uh, a set of sprites inside a sequence. So you can see the frame number increasing there. So this is sequence 95, frame 7, this rock right here. Okay, so right now we're going to be placing a sprite. So what you want to do is click on frame 2, which is the second rock. We'll use that. Click where you want it. We'll put it right here. Now... What you want to do is right click on the uh, sprite, click on properties, and we're going to be going through these properties. The X and Y is self explanatory, that's the X and Y value of the rock on the screen, and you can see that in the bottom right as well. As you're moving the rock around, you can see that changing in the bottom right, down there, and this will just tell you that as well. You can use this to change them. Like the X position, we could make it 400, or actually we'll make it 200, and you can see it jump backwards, but it's just easy to move it around. Same thing goes for the Y. Now for the type, we've got background, person, slash creature, or invisible. Background, I hardly ever use. Basically, this will just draw the sprite to the background. It can't have a script, and it's basically a dead sprite, and everything is drawn in front of it. For instance, if I select background right now, in the game, that'll be dead. As in, if I grab another sprite, look at that. It's drawn, it, there's no depth hue of the sprite because it's just on the background. Nothing can be behind it. And it can't have a script. So it's not used very often, but you can use it sometimes. Now, person slash creature, don't be misled by the, the name. This is used, uh, this is the most commonly used type. Even on rocks and things, there aren't persons or creatures, so... Tell you what, if you click on person or creature, it can have a script, it can be walked behind, it's the most commonly used type. Invisible, it's used quite often as well. The sprite can't have a script when it's on invisible. But what you'll notice is, when you select it, it shows up transparent here. In the game, it'll be invisible. But it can still have hardness and all that, so it's good. It's just, just going to be invisible in the game. It's often used to add hardness to things that that you need, like, like houses. But we'll get to that later. Right now, put it on person slash creature. And if you hold space, you'll notice you get uh, the hardness shows up on the screen. And this is where Dink can't walk, in this, this blue stuff over here, and this, this white hardness. Now, what you'll notice when you hold space is there's a grey hollow box or, uh, in the middle of this rock or oh, not in the middle but at the bottom this is the rock's hard box 
And while it's hollow, Dink can walk through this rock. When when it's solid, that means that it'll be hard and Dink cannot walk through it. So to make it solid, you want to right-click on it and press Properties. And tick the hard box. Press OK. And now you'll notice it's solid. Dink won't be able to walk through that rock. Okay, now right-click on the rock again and press Properties. No hit is pretty self-explanatory. If you tick that box, Dink won't be able to hit the rock. Like, when you hit it, you won't hear a hit sound, and it'll just be like you're hitting nothing. Now, warping, we'll get to that later, so just ignore that for now. The brain is... Uh, we'll also be getting to that later, but uh, the descriptions pretty much explain it. Each sprite uh, has a brain that controls it. Uh, this will be usually used for creatures and people. Uh, for, like, sprites like rocks, you don't give them a brain. So don't worry about that for now. And I'm going to go over a few of these. And then I'm going to make another video to go over the other stuff that I want to explain more in detail. So the touch damage. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory too. If you put the touch damage up to 2, when Dink touches that, it'll, it'll damage him. It'll give him 2 damage, touch damage. So whenever Dink touches a rock now, it'll hurt him by 2. So, it does take his defense into account, so that might not take two off his health. It just depends on his defense. The touch sequence, that's only used for warping. The sound. Now, if you put a sound number on here, which can be found from the start.c, but that will be explained later as well. Uh, when you enter the screen, that sound will just repeat over and over again, but it'll come from this sprite. So... The further you move away from this sprite, the the softer it'll get, and when you move right next to the sprite, it'll be the loud, like the loudest. Vision, uh, that that helps because if if you've got, let's say you've got, um, you press V to change the vision, so I press V and this will come up. Change it to one. Now if I press E and grab another sprite, we'll grab this uh, frame eight right here. That is now vision 1. You can see the bottom right corner, we're in vision 1. Now, if we change this vision back to 0, you'll notice that disappears. When vision is on 1, we'll see it. That is very handy because you can change the vision using scripting later. And based on certain uh, variables or what's happening in the story, you can have Dink come back to the screen and make a person appear or something. Because you changed the vision to 1 and you got a person on the screen that's on vision 1. Now if we grab another sprite and add that, and we say we want it vision 2, rather than changing to vision 2 and putting it down, you can also do this, right click on it and press properties, where it says vision, change it to 2, and you'll see it just disappears, because we're on vision 1 at the moment. So if we change the vision to 2 now, that rock will disappear and that one will appear. So basically every vision contains its own set of extra sprites that can't be seen on vision 0 but no matter what the vision is currently set on the vision 0 sprites will always be visible if that makes any sense so we've got vision 0 vision 1 vision 2 but we don't want them so I'm going to go to each vision and delete them and change it back to vision 0 so that's vision timing slash delay uh, I'll explain that later when, we're, when I'm explaining how to place people. Experience given is pretty self-explanatory. That's the experience given when the uh, monster dies or whatever you've whatever sprite you've got. Usually that's set when you're doing scripting. I hardly ever set that in here. And you got defense, hit points, speed, that'll be explained later. Size that's the size of the sprite, so for instance, if you want that sprite to be bigger, you can change it to 150. Okay, and it'll be bigger. Don't worry about that white bit, that won't show up in the game. It looks abnormal in the editor, but it's just my computer. It won't actually show up like that in the game. So if I go to 70, it'll be smaller. And 100 is normal sized. Script will also be explained later. And basically over here we've got sequence and frame. 
that just tells you the sequence number and the frame number of the sprite as we see when we're selecting it in the sequence sequence page when we press E base idle, base walk, base attack and base death will be explained later when I'm placing people and I'll also be explaining depth queue in a later video the reason for this is that I want to make I want to explain all of these other options in depth so they're going to be their own separate videos so that was the basics of placing sprites just the basic options so we can delete that rock now and now everything is exactly the same as before we started this tutorial and I'll see you next time for the second video of sprite placing